and when I saw that a mustard blush existed, are you kidding me? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Yulisa, and today I'm going to be showing you this look using all of my favorite makeup products at the moment. Um, I'm going to be trying them on for you to see and showing you swatches of a few products that I don't use. So if you want to see how I got this look, just go ahead and grab a snack because I think it's going to be a bit of a longer video. And let's get started. I did cut my hair, as you can tell. I'm thinking of going a little bit shorter. And I have been gone for a while because I was finishing my bachelor's degree. It was my last semester. I was super busy. Um, and I took a break from eyeshadow and makeup in general. Like, I wasn't wearing as much makeup. I wanted to, s to focus on school. But I did graduate, so you should be seeing more looks coming up. I have a lot of video ideas, so if you have any ideas, let me know down below. Um, coming up soon, you can expect an eyebrow routine for sure. So yeah, like I said, let me know down below if you have any ideas. Um, but yeah, let's just get started with the video. Okay, so I'm going to be trying to go through this quite quickly since I have a lot of products here in front of me to show you. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a full face of my current favorites. I do have a few categories where I have a few favorites and I'm obviously not going to be able to try them all on as in lips or blush or something like that. So I will show you them and I'll show you like some swatches. But I will be kind of customizing a certain look using all of my current favorite makeup products. Okay, so the first is my Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation Plus Concealer. I'm in the shade 01 Creamy Vanilla, and I pour a pump of this onto my little clean palette where I mix my foundations because if you've ever seen my channel before, I struggle finding my foundation shade. I am a fair to light yellowy olive undertone. So that is very rare to find uh, in the fair to light category, but even in the medium category where a lot of people assume people are more olive. So this comes in handy to mix them. And because I am olive, I'm going to be taking the LA Girl Pro Mixers. These are in blue and yellow. These are to kind of customize your foundation to be the right undertone for you and I thought that was an amazing idea. I think they're one of the first brands to come up with this idea. I have seen white foundation mixers, darkening ones, and a few yellow ones um, but not quite in the range that they have these in. There's blue, yellow, I believe orange, and there might be one or two more that I'm not including but the yellow one is obviously supposed to make it more yellow, warm tone, blue kind of neutralizes any foundations, but combined, um, yellow and blue creates an olive undertone. And the brand themselves kind of recommend them together if you're trying to make an olive undertone. So when I saw that, I immediately bought them. They don't change the finish or wear of my foundations really that I've noticed. If anything, it makes it like a slightly more, slightly less dewy, but the tiniest bit for you to even notice. So I put a teeny bit of yellow because the Milani 01 Creamy Vanilla is pretty yellow but not yellow enough for me and it's too dark for me and then I put even less blue I highly recommend these mixers for foundations if you really struggle finding your undertone in Foundations, it doesn't matter if you're super dark or super light, these will definitely help you out. And then, like I mentioned, the foundation is too dark for me and then even darker when I add in the yellow or blue. So I do have to mix in a little bit of white in it to lighten it. I know this is so much, but that is how hard it is uh, having a undertone like mine. And I'm quite a perfectionist for a lot of things so making sure that it's my undertone is really important to me. I did my eyebrows because I kind of do my eyebrows differently. I don't know if you can tell. I kind of do a more of like a fluffy bushy way with the eyebrow hairs going straight up and I am going to be doing an updated eyebrow routine using my favorite products and kind of like my new technique for this sort of look so look out for that so this whole video will not be showing any sort of brow products or how I do my brows. So you go ahead and mix it and make sure it's mixed very well. I already moisturized with my rosehip oil and I am breaking out a bit. And you can go ahead and apply the foundation with a brush, with your finger, the back of a brush, 
whatever it is as long as your hands are clean or the brush is clean but I'm gonna go ahead and do it with my fingers uh, I know a lot of people pump it into their sponge this is dirty because I used it for my eyebrows they go ahead and pump it into their sponge but they don't realize that the first whole layer that is on your sponge is soaked in then once the base layer is there then it won't soak up as much but I do not like to do that even if I had a foundation that matched me perfectly nor do I just put it on and then go ahead and start blending because again the first layer will be absorbed that's a waste of product and a lack of coverage so you won't get as much coverage as you would like so I just go ahead and dot it and I will look crazy but before that I forgot to say I've been trying the Fenty Beauty concealer in the shade 145 but it's too light I feel like she should have um, not made each color a ton lighter than the foundation shade just a little bit I find that when I don't have a lot of redness it matches my undertone quite well I am gonna put my mirror right here so that's what you're gonna see but yeah, if I don't have too much redness, it um, helps me kind of spot conceal before I go in with my foundation so that I don't have so much redness in certain areas. So I like to put it here where I get a lot of redness on any blemishes that are extremely dark. I do have some scarring and I've been breaking out a good amount lately. You can imagine why. And because it's kind of lighter, it's fine because I'm going to be going over it. With my foundation, I just kind of want to reduce the redness. Um, I'd say the coverage is like a medium to buildable coverage, but because it's too light under my eyes, even building it up, like it kind of looks gray in my most purple areas. So I think if there was actually a shade for me, I wouldn't mind it. It's not as dry as I thought it was going to be. That's why I was avoiding it. A lot of people were comparing it to the NYX Can't Stop the concealer. I think that's what it was called. Um, and that I tried and it was way too dry for me. Now I'm gonna go in with the foundation and this is where I'm gonna look crazy and I don't really care. I do put a good amount on, especially right now that I have a lot of redness. It ends up looking pretty natural and skin-like because of the finish of the Milani one. It's like satiny and the white foundation that I mix in with it is kind of dewy. Well, not kind of, it is illuminating foundation. So this ends up being like satin to dewy. And I do have some excess here, so I tap in and then I tap off a little bit of the excess here just because of that whole thing that I told you that it sinks in. That's a good tip to do for foundation or for concealer. Like I said, I have quite a bit of redness, so it might look like my foundation was too light for me, but it's just because the redness is... Redness can be, like, quite dark, so it makes me look darker, but I match it to my neck, even though my neck is a little bit burned, so I'm a little bit pink on my chest. This is also not a perfect favorite, but I've been using it a lot, which is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. I will go, once I have my foundation over it, with this little bit, even though this is a little too dark for me and a little bit where I see I need a little bit more coverage like I said I have a lot of redness in the area and I'm still seeing it come through even with the amount of foundation I applied today just because I have a lot of redness I have been liking like less cover like it doesn't have to be perfect to me anymore like before because I'd rather it not cake up throughout the day um and I have been liking more of a satin dewy finish I don't really do matte anymore um, even some satins look very matte on me. Part of the reason is because I don't produce as much oil anymore because I apply oil. So when you hydrate your skin better, it doesn't feel like it needs to produce more oil. But also, I'm quite dehydrated. I do not love drinking water that much and I haven't been drinking enough water. But I do hydrate my skin well. For concealer, I'm going to be mixing the two, the Fenty and the Too Faced one. More of the Too Faced one. This is too light for me. And same thing with this, I go ahead and put a little bit on the back of my hand and I go ahead and get the back of the sponge kind of so it doesn't immediately soak the product. Neither of these concealers dry super quick, which I'm a fan of so that you can have a good amount of time to blend it all out. And they don't dry down matte either because that would look very creepy on my, under my eyes.
even though I've already filmed a good amount of videos on my channel, I believe I'd say like 8 to 12, I'm not sure. I'm still not used to doing my makeup on camera. Like, I like to be like this close to my mirror, um, so it's pretty hard for me. I do look over here a lot, by the way, because um, my monitor is on that side. This is a favorite of mine currently. It is the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. As you saw, I use it to spot conceal, to blend in there, and then also to blend my eye primer. It's like compact, um, so it gives you the coverage that you need, but it also has a little bit of give to blend a little bit. Nothing like for eyeshadow work or anything like that. I've also been loving this LA Girl sponge. They're kind of similar to the Real Techniques ones, except I think that these are a little bit more dense, but they're still squishy. And also the AOA sponges, this light pink one or a darker pink one. For bronzer, I struggle finding bronzers for my undertone, like the olive -y yellow undertone, and um, they're always too red, too pink, too gray to orange. There's never a nice shade for me. And I believe bronzer should be your undertone, but darker. I mean, that's what it's supposed to look like, like where the sun naturally bronzes you a little bit more, which is your cheeks and your forehead. So I saw this Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Powder Foundation in the shade Honeycomb 20. And it's this really pretty tone. As you can see, it is olivey. And I have not been liking powder much because of what I told you with the whole that I'm more dehydrated right now. So I thought that it might be a little too dry or like have too much coverage or anything like that. But it's definitely buildable like and I just do it all along my forehead and here. I don't contour too much but I will be showing you a contour product that I have been liking right after this. And I tap instead of blend because I feel like it doesn't remove my coverage too much. Up here I don't care too much on my forehead because I don't have a lot of scarring up there. But on my cheeks and stuff I do. And I do not go above my cheekbone. Because then it will like drag my face down. And my face is already quite thin and on the longer side. And if I take it down a little bit too much I just go in with the... the whatever's left on the foundation uh, sponge and that is why I do not like to set my foundation. I do not set my foundation at all and I have not in a long long time. I feel like once you start to get cakey or lines form and stuff like that, once you already have a powder in the area then it becomes a mess to kind of fix it or blend it out because it's already many products layered on top of each other instead of it not being set and then you can kind of smooth the area over. I still feel like my concealer is a little bit too dark. So I'm just kind of blending it into the concealer area. I have been liking this NYX Three Steps to Sculpt. As you can see, that shade is super like neutral, not very gray, not pink. It's super duper neutral. And I love the shade to kind of shorten my chin a little bit. Just because I said my face is already very long. A teeny bit under my nose. Kind of perk it up just a little bit. And a little bit on my creases. And a tiny bit above up here, I noticed it can get a little wild really quick. And it kind of just lifts the nose a little bit. If I'm feeling like really sculpting, I just go in that cheekbone area. My cheekbone is already kind of cut on that side. On this side, I don't think they're as defined. And if you want like a more plump poutier bottom lip. You just do it a little bit under there. And I am squeezing the brush. I have been loving this brush for contouring and doing all this because it is quite flexible but it's kind of targeted. This is the e.l.f. doesn't say but I believe it's the highlighting brush. I've been liking the flower blush bombs. This is in the color nectar but I do have almost all of their shades like the lighter ones. I have bubbly, pinched, cinnamon, I've been using Nectar and Pinch the most. Pinch is like a neutrally kind of pinky, peachy, not really peachy. Nectar is more of the peachy, orangey one. This is kind of like a cool tone pinky purple. And then Cinnamon is more of like a darker peachy brown. Kind of goes with my shirt. So I might use this one today. I also really like the ColourPop Super Shock Cheeks. 
the formula of them. They are like a cream to powder finish, so they are not too drying on the skin, but then they kind of set down. This is in the shade Get Laid. You can see another peachy, but it has a little bit more coral in it. And then I also got this one, which is a Korean brand. Samuel? Samuel? I don't know how to say that at all. Sorry about that. And just as the seam. I'm not sure exactly what color this is, but if I can find the color, I'll let you know. But it's the only like yellowy mustard one that they have. And when I saw that a mustard blush existed, are you kidding me? I have wanted that for forever and I've used like shadows and stuff, but like the pans of eyeshadows are so little and then you like get like a little circle and like it's not big enough. And then this ColourPop Pressed powder blush that Kathleen Lights made, my favorite. Um, this is her blush with them called So Retrograde, I believe. It is like an orange with yellow, like like a yellow sheen. She does not like shimmer in her blushes or highlighters, just like me. So I was like, I I trust her that she'll come up with a blush that isn't shimmery. I'm gonna decide which one I do. I think. Once I see what I'm going to do with the eyeshadow palette, then I'm going to use the Baby Got Peach palette from ColourPop. So highlighter, I have been liking the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Liquid. I think it looks like a wet look. It doesn't have too much shine. I have tried other liquid highlighters and they either don't set down, like they're too glossy, or they kind of pick up my foundation when I'm doing that. I don't like that. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and set my under, under eyes because I have let them kind of set a little bit down and I'm getting creasing as you can see I have pretty bad creasing not just with age I'm not getting old okay I have always had them but I think it has gotten worse because I don't wear my contacts and I squint a lot so yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and set I have been liking this AOA Studio F19 brush kind of reminds me of the Anastasia highlighting brush I have no new favorite powder. I've been on the hunt to find one that I like, but I also have not been baking because that is way too drying for me at this time. And I don't bring it down onto my cheek too much, as you can see. Today the finish is looking pretty satiny. Now since I've set, yeah, it looks satiny, you can tell right there. Mm, yeah, I don't put like a ton, ton of powder. And before I was actually using less concealer than now, so that it doesn't crease as much, but haven't been sleeping well, so my under eyes are quite dark, even though usually I don't have dark under eyes. I also like to put a little bit, just a tap in there. And definitely on my chin, because like I said, I like to shorten it so I don't want to emphasize that area. And then for my forehead, I use a larger, larger. I like to use a larger one, and I barely have anything on this side, mostly. I almost have everything off just to kind of remove the shine a little. I do not powder my entire face or really like bake it on and cake it on. I don't think skin looks very like natural that way. For me, I like a very, like, natural looking skin, kind of more glowy. We'll get the glow in just a bit. And then, like, colorful eyes is kind of my style. For now, things can keep changing. So for this, I don't like this because it pumps out way too much, even if you try to only pump out a little. And I have been liking this Real Techniques setting brush. It kind of has, like, dual fiber bristles and I kind of just spread it on my back of my hand and I want to evenly coat the brush and I go ahead and start applying. I kind of do try to skip over that blemish and I don't like to spread it too much because like I said liquid highlighter lighters tend to try to pick up your foundation from underneath if you're stippling on for too long and I do kind of bring it around this area so you can get that little juicy glow. Do you see what I mean? How it kind of gives you the wet hydrated look. I do not, do not like a metallic highlight and all those like powdery highlights like the Ofra ones that everyone's crazy about and all that look. I haven't tried the Ofra highlighters by the way. I just know I don't like metallic finishes like that or powdery looking where it looks fake. I want to look like I'm just freaking radiating with health and moisture. I know a lot of people don't like the word like moist, moisture. 
I love the word moist. It sounds healthy. Okay, so now we have a bit of a glow. I'm going to add a wee bit more onto that thing. Let's see what I'm going to do with this baby got peach palette. I have already swatched the shade. I'm going to go ahead and prime my eyes first, but I have been trying the Anastasia Eye Primer and also the Milani one because I was in need of a new good one since I'm going to be doing a lot more eyeshadow looks. Took a long break from eyeshadow there for a bit. I wasn't really posting anymore but yeah I've been testing this one out and I'm gonna say thought I liked it but it's not very long wearing and it makes me crease now this one I've been liking a good amount it's already held up more than the other one has and I put in a good amount this one doesn't have as much pigment as the other one I go ahead and blend it with this Real Techniques deluxe crease brush my lids are a little bit dry the primer does say, apply to clean dry lids, blend well from lash line to brow, and allow to set for 30 seconds. I forgot to mention, I also have been liking this e.l.f. Dewy Highlighting Stick. It literally is a clear, glossy looking thing. It does not set down or anything, and I don't like to wear it when I'm wearing foundation, really. It's like when I only like spot conceal and kind of wearing like no makeup makeup look, and I literally put it on my cheekbones to have that wet hydrated look. I have also been loving this coconut essence hydro mist. It literally doesn't have any like shimmer and it leaves me pretty freaking dewy. I just cover my eyes and eyebrows a little because I don't want them to get wet. You will see it leaves me a lot more glowy. The baby got peach palette. As you can see it doesn't have anything too dark too light. The middle shade is the most peach to me. They already finished the rainbow. I literally have all of them. I'm a big, big fan of ColourPop and I have been for some time. So if you'd like to see more uh, eyeshadow looks with these, combining them, like complementary colors and stuff like that, uh, let me know because I haven't seen too many people combining palettes together and making looks, um, at least the people that I follow, subscribe to. I feel like everybody just does a look on a palette and then moves on, forgets about it. Um, I really, really love these palettes. I have tried a few so far. As you can see the ones that have the packaging, I have not so far. I love ColourPop's eyeshadow formula, especially their matte formula. I love pastels and I feel like there's not enough pastels, pastel eyeshadows. I know there are some and there's a few palettes um, that I have my eye on, but not enough. And a lot of brands that have come out with them, they're like very like chalky and dry and too light. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and probably put a picture up in this or this corner showing you which colors I use. It's not gonna be such an extravagant look, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and run through this quickly and I'll let you see which shades I'm using. I'm gonna go ahead in with the shade Darling. It shows up a lot more peachy on the eye than on the, in the pan. I don't know if you can see it there. It looks pretty neutral. So this one right here. I'm going to bring this into here even though I don't really like to too much because my eyes are already very deep set. I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm not used to doing my makeup in a mirror so far away like this. So I'm still learning and I'm still going to continue learning. But if you guys have any tips or anything you'd like to see specifically for me, like for me to change or something, I can always accept some constructive criticism. I absolutely freaking love this shade. I feel like peaches are always like, like peach eyeshadows are always too like salmony, kind of like the center shade in this palette, or they're really, really. No, I did not just do that. I accidentally grabbed the wrong color. Oh my gosh. So they look more even, even though I didn't want to use the color. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with ochre. And I'm gonna take this gorgeous duochrome, like peachy pink golden called Get Even. And I'm going to apply it in the inner corner with the shade. I 
Yeah, see, with the brush, it doesn't pick up as well as my finger does. This color blends really well into the other peachy shade. Like I said, this came out a little brighter than I wanted to just because I accidentally grabbed center full. But I still like the look. I've literally used two brushes in all this, and I'm going to only use two brushes. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of ochre for the bottom. I almost never bring my eyeshadow all the way in. I feel like it like closes off my eye, but I kind of want it today. If you bring it down a bit, it kind of hides like my fine line where my eyeshadow creases a lot. I have been loving these NYX Vivid Brights liners. I have almost all of them. And I kind of like how blue would look with this peach. I'm going to go ahead and do my winged eyeliner. Oh, it's really hard for me to do on camera, but I'm going to try my best. The only thing I like the colors with these, it's just that they're a little bit dry. Crackly, I'm unsure. Is this going to look good? Yeah, I think so. I love how the peach looks with the blue. Let me do the other eye. That's as good as they're going to get right now. I have been loving the Wet n Wild Mega Slim Skinny Mascara for my bottom eyelashes. It has little fibers and I use this on the tips of my eyelashes because if I wear just waterproof, which I need because my eyelashes are super straight. I always have to curl them. It will leave little dots because it starts transferring when my skin gets oily. So if I wear non-waterproof, which is just the regular, it's water-based and then I don't get the transferring. Another eyeliner I've been loving is the Physicians Formula Eye Booster in Ultra Black, but I know they came out with a waterproof black version, and I've heard that's darker and better, so next time I'll be buying that one. This Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara has been awesome, and it's been doing a great job. It is more of a wet formula than I'm used to, but it really volumizes and literally gives you a false lash effect. But because it's more of a wet formula, you can kind of leave a little bit too much product sometimes. So I've been loving this, again, Real Techniques Lash Separator. As you can see, it has like little pointy things and I just kind of go through here and separate out my lashes to get them very fanned out. So for blush, I think I'm going to go in with a mixture of Get Laid and the Caffeine Lights So Retrograde. So I'm going to go in with a mix of those. I'm going to first go in with the peachy one. And I have been liking applying blush more higher up. I might have put a little too much here. And then... Just, it can be way too dark for me, very quickly. Lately I have been loving these Ardell Foam Ink Lashes. They're the most natural individual lashes I've found. They come in short, medium, and long, and I mostly add some in the outer corner. 
But with this mascara, they're looking very good. I'm not going to apply some today. I did want to mention them. And then my favorite lash glue at the moment has been this Strip Lash Adhesive uh, Latex Free. I am allergic to latex, so I can't wear a regular one. I like how it's... You'll you you could you do you wait a brush on applicator which makes it a lot easier to apply and i've also been loving these aoa studio eyelash tweezers it kind of helps me like pinch them together i think they're better for like the whole strip line but for individuals they work just fine too i have also been loving this mr right now eyeliner pencil in the shade brian it's a nude it just kind of makes my eyes look a little bit bigger, even though I am running out. Like, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell the difference between this eye and that one. This one looks a little bit larger, because it kind of opens up the eye. And for lips, I have a few that I have been loving. I have been loving this Essence Long Lasting Lip Pencil in 08. Line my lips with it, it's pretty close to my natural lip color. If I press my lips together and get the blood brush going in them, then it does it does look a little lighter that way. I'm not into the whole dark lip liner and lighter lips, especially not on me. I don't know if it's because my lip shape, I think that looks good if your lip curve is like in and then your lip really pops out from the line, but I don't like quite flat in there, so the line contour looks very fake. And then I have been loving the ColourPop Slow Down Ultra Satin Lip in collaboration with Shayla. I sometimes blot it out or sometimes just wear it like fully applied. I just think too much comes off on the wand a little. So that's why I'd rather blot it. My lips are not symmetrical or super full by any means, so if it looks crooked. It's not my lip lining, so I cannot wait to make them more symmetrical. I'm loving this look so far. Another nude-ish lip combo I've been loving is the Melt Mural Ultra Matte Lipstick. It's kind of more of an orangey terracotta. It definitely has like a yellow undertone, and I use it with the Melt baked ultra matte eyeliner yeah i said eyeliner it i use it as a lip liner nothing wrong comes of it there's not rules in makeup really so if i want to use an eyeliner as a lip liner i definitely can i first saw uh what's her name linda hallberg a swedish makeup artist do it and then also i've been liking this essence gloss i will put the name down below it's like a thick kind of gives you like a 3d effect smells like i don't know like a faint cherry sweet scent and then lastly i have been loving this freckle pen this is the lime crime sun kissed freckle pen and i am gonna put a few this is the most natural freckle pen that i have seen i used to use this freck long wear freckle makeup but you kind of have to dab it off because it comes off dark and then it gives that natural thing. But since I don't set my foundation, it would kind of pick up the foundation and I wear oil under my foundation. And I feel like you have to set your makeup if you're going to use that one. And even then, when you put it over powder, it would look like very like gray, I would say. And I love it. And then there you can see I have little freckles. And then I kind of just go over my natural ones a little bit. Okay, so this is the final makeup look. I hope you enjoyed. I had a fun time creating this look, showing you all my current favorites. So if you did enjoy the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also hit the notification bell to get reminded every time I upload so you never miss any of my videos. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is beautysetulisa. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. So now we're moving on to highlighter. Mm, no, not highlighter. And... First, I've been liking the... First, I've been liking the ColourPop Super Shock... Sh uh, Super Chop. I do not powder my entire phone. phone.